Hello, everyone. Welcome to my QPlus video tutorial. In my previous video tutorials, I showed you how to create the QPlus project and also how to perform cell segmentation using the standard cell detection method and also the statist method. So today I'm going to show you how to perform multiplex analysis because I'm going to show you how to perform the multiplex the analysis on the whole tissue today. So first we need to perform cell segmentation for the whole tissue. So we can use the polygon tool to select the whole tissue. Okay, we selected the area we want to perform the analysis. Now we can have a look at the annotation. We can press it. You can see this is the area we want to perform the analysis. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use the statist method to perform cell segmentation. First, we need to drag and drop the Cell segmentation scripts for the 0.5 micrometer scripts. We can press run. You can see QPass asks us to find the segmentation model. We can press OK. Now we can select the model. You can see this is the file, so we can press to open. Now QPass is running to perform cell segmentation. This takes half an hour for the whole tissue. Okay, you can see QPass finished the cell segmentation. It took 37 minutes for the whole tissue. Let's have a look at the segmentation result. We can zoom in, you can see it's pretty good. So next, we can perform the multiplex analysis. First, we can have a look at the online tutorial for QPass. You can see here is the multiplex analysis. We already did the cell segmentation analysis. Now, we need to do is to create a classifier for each mark. You can see there are two ways to do this. The first one is the threshold single measurement. And the second one is to train a machine learning classifier. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the simple thresholding method. I will show you the machine learning method in next video tutorial. For the simple threshing holding method, you can see we just need to go to the Classify object classification, then create a single measurement classifier. So now we can go to QPass. You can see in this tissue, we have 15 antibodies staining in total. We can use the bright and the contrast tool to switch off and on for each staining. So first, then let's have a look at the staining for the CD31. We can switch off everything first. Then we can switch on CD31 staining. Let's zoom out. And we can switch off the segmentation. You can see here is the CD31 staining. You can see strong CD31 staining on the blood vessels. And also we have some background here. For simple thresholding method, we have to do it one by one for all the stainings. So now we can create the single measurement for CD31 staining. We can go to classify object, classification, 
then create a single measurement classifier. So here you can see you can select the object field as cells, but we don't have to select it. Now we are going to do the CD31. We can select the field as CD31. So you can see at the moment the threshold was set by Q plus as 2.25. Then any cells have the intensity above the threshold will be CD31 positive cells. Below the threshold will be CD31 negative cells. We don't need to set uh, the negative cells. We can just tick the box for the live preview. Now we can switch on the cell segmentation again. Okay, you can see the yellow cells are CD31 positive cells. Let's switch off the segmentation again. You can see if we consider no sprite staining as a positive, then here background, we are not going to debate the background and the positive staining. Just for demonstration, we can consider the bright staining as a positive staining, so we can adjust the threshold. Now we switch on the segmentation again. Now we can increase the threshold. You can see the changes. Now the CD31 positive cells are the cells show strong CD31 staining. If we switch off the cell segmentation again, you can see the yellow cells match to the strong CD31 staining. So now we can use this threshold as CD31 positive cells. Then we can save our classification as CD31. Let's save it. You can see here we save the classifier as CD31. Okay, we did the CD31. Next, we can do the CD4. We can switch off the CD31. Then switch on the CD4 staining. Now we can switch off the cell segmentation. Mm -hmm. You can see the positive staining for CD4. So now we are going to set the classifier for CD4. We need to select the channel as CD4. We already tickled the box live preview. Now we can switch on the cell segmentation. Okay, you can see. It. It is pretty good. It matches to the positive cell staining. We don't need to change the threshold. We can just save this one as CD4 classifier. Let's save it. You can see here we saved it as CD4. So we did the CD4. Next we can do CD44. We can switch off CD4. Then switch on CD44. Again, we need to change the channel filter to CD44. Now we can switch on the cell segmentation again. Again, you can see it is quite good for CD44. We don't need to change the threshold. We can just save it. Okay, you can see we save the classifier as CD44. So as I said, we have 15 antibodies staining here. You just need to go to the same process for each staining until you go to the end for the last one. So I'm not going to show you all of them. I just use the CD31, CD4, and the CD44 as an example to show you how to set it, because it takes time to go through all of them. But I did go through all the antibody staining to set the correct threshold for each staining. I can show you later. So let's have a look at the online tutorial again. You can see here, after you 
created a classifier for each mark. Next step is to combine the classifiers. We can click and have a look. You can see we can go to classify again object classification to node object classifier. So let's do it. We can go to key pass classify object classification then node classifier. You can see for the demonstration, I only set the CD31, CD4, and the CD44. If we select one, you apply classifier. We can go back to switch on CD31 staining again. We can switch off for CD44. We can fill the cells. So I showed you already, we can switch off, switch on, you can see we will use this classifier to define the CD31 positive cells for the whole tissue. Here I showed you how to use CD31. We can select all of them. Let's apply the classifier sequentially. We can run. Okay, we can switch off this. Then now you can see by the counter we can zoom in. Any cells labeled as the yellow color will be CD31 positive and those sandy cells. Then we have the orange cells as the CD4 positive cells. And the blue cells as the CD44 positive cells. We can zoom out. Okay, you can see our classification on the whole tissue for CD31, CD4, and the CD44. So I use the three staining for demonstration. It will be the same process for other staining to create a classifier for each marker. So as I said, I set the classifier for each marker before. We can just know the letter object and have a look. We can go to project, open project. So we don't need to save this one. Okay, we noted the project. We can go to annotation. And then this is the one that I created the classifier for all the stainings. Now we can go to classify object classification, node object classifier. You can see here I created the classifiers for each antibody staining. We can select all of them for demonstration. Then we can just apply classifiers sequentially. You can see it is running. Okay, it is done. You can see we should have the positive staining cells for each antibody. Now we can change the view for the cells. We can just see the cell boundaries only. And also we can fill the cells. Let's switch off this. Now we can zoom in. You can see individual cells. The corner will represent the antibody staining. Of course, now cells express different proteins. So those cells have a combination of different color. When we apply the classifier sequentially, QPAS will automatically calculate the intensity for each antibody is staining in the cells. Then we can see the measurement. You can see here, we can show detecting measurement. If you press it, we can download the table. Because we have more than 740,000 cells here, it takes time to download the table. Okay, we have the table. Let's make the table bigger. You can see all the cells in this column 
And also, if you drag to the other side, you can see all the measurement for each cell. You can see the measurement for DIP CT31 until the last antibody protoplanin. So we have the data. You can just press the save. Let's see with the measurement on my deck table. Again, it takes time to save it. Okay, we save the water data. You can use the data to do other analysis, for example, load the data into SURAT to perform the cell clustering. So that's today's demonstration. I'm going to stop from here. You can see it's the one simple to create a single classifier for each mark using the simple threshold method. But you have to take time to go through one by one for all the staining. In my next video tutorial, I will show you how to use the machine learning method. I hope to see you in my next video tutorial. Thank you for watching my videos.